Tell us about the meeting. Take us inside the room. What did you hear from Mary Barra? Well, Mary knew she was coming into a room that was not happy. Uh, look, you know, this is a complicated subject. Uh, we all remember what happened 10 years ago uh, and that the companies have got to make sure that they remain competitive. I think what is, I mean, I was not the only person uh, last week. I did say that she had managed to do something no one else had done, which is to unite Republicans and Democrats. And there were lawmakers on both sides of the room that said that again. But I think the biggest issue that was discussed in the room was why General Motors is putting so much production in Mexico and how we need to have a level playing field. And, uh, you know, uh, several people brought it up. By the time I got to it, I simply talked about the production figures and that General Motors produced close to 730,000 vehicles in Mexico last year and imported 80% of those back into the U.S. We want to know what we need to do to be competitive and keep those jobs in the United States and ensure that, you know, we're helping the working men and women of this country. And it is a complicated issue. Uh, let's take a listen to what uh, Mary Barra had to say about the decision making. The thing that I best need to do to make sure I'm living up to that and to the U.S. taxpayers, to whom we will be forever grateful, is to make sure General Motors is strong going forward, we continue to manufacture, we continue to provide jobs, and we make sure we meet all of our commitments. And that's what I intend to do. So, Congresswoman, you heard what Mary Barr had to say there publicly. You obviously heard a lot of what she had to say privately as well. You understand, from having worked there, this is complicated. She's doing what she feels like she needs to do to keep the company going forward, even having been bailed out by the government. As you well know, it, do you buy it? Do you buy that you know, this was something that she had to do? I think that all of the auto companies are struggling with decisions right now. You know, first of all, let's talk about the fact that the auto industry is cyclical. When uh, I, I've been not worked uh, it, at General Motors, though I worked for the industry until I went to Congress in different ways, uh, it used to be that 14 or 15 million uh, sales a year was considered a very good year. The reality is, is that it's been at 18 million the last couple of years, and the industry has had one of the long, has had the long longest run it's ever had since its founding of good sales cycles. Now it's back at about 17 million. Anybody who works in the industry knows there's going to be a softening and the companies weren't prepared for it a decade ago. So they need to make tough decisions. But on the same day that General Motors made their announcement, and it was not handled well, and it is disturbing uh, that they're closing this many plants, Ford Motor Company called me to tell me that a plant in my district that I love, the Flat Rock plant, which produces Mustangs, was eliminating a shift there and in Kentucky, but showed their concern about the workers, that every worker was going to be moved to another plant, and that they're making tough decisions, too. So it's also how you're announcing it, what right. you're telling your employees, what are we... So the contrast is very deep. Look, all these companies are getting ready to go through a tough time. But what do we need to do as policymakers to make sure they've got a level playing field? I don't like the fact that they're putting so many jobs. Why did they take the Blazer plant recently to Mexico? Why did right. they not put it in one of these plants that has excess capacity? So, Congresswoman, I have to ask you, after you had this meeting, you huddled uh, with your colleagues, what happens next from a congressional uh, perspective? Your colleague, uh, Representative Levin, talked about the idea that, you know, maybe the trade agreement uh, that the president, the, the NAFTA 2.0, you know, maybe that is in play in a different way now. I also wonder, are you going to call Mary Barra back to testify before Congress in a more open hearing? So I think there are a number of things that are going to happen. The administration uh, has signed a trade deal last week. Uh, I call it NAFTA 2.0. Other people call it something else. I have talked to uh, Ambassador Lighthouser directly several times to people at the White House. They're hoping that people like me are going to support it. Uh, I'm not going to support something that is still shipping jobs uh, over to Mexico. Uh, General Motors understands that. Uh, I've, made the, I've said that to Ambassador Lighthouser. So the enforcing legislation is going to be very important and what else is written into that. So we're keeping jobs here. Uh, I think there are a number of other issues that the industry has divided on. And it's very hard for 
all of us uh, that are looking at policy issues. What do they need to be a healthy industry? We want to keep them at the forefront of innovation and technology. So what does that mean to fuel efficiency standards? What does that mean right. to emission standards? What does that mean to autonomous vehicles? All of those are very important pieces of legislation that none of we're all looking at. We're going to ask questions. You know, you talk, we're looking at tax incentives. How much are they using what was in the Republican tax bill to ship jobs overseas? Uh, the industry's not uh, together on what they wanted in terms of electric vehicles or tax credits. And, you know, I don't want to subsidize them, but I do want to incentivize that production in the U.S. Lots of tough questions. We're going to be asking them and working with the companies, but we're not going to just be rubber stamps either. This right. is our job is to protect jobs in this country. And will we see Mary Barra back up on Capitol Hill, you think? You know, um, I think that Mary understood after the last couple of days that we need, and by the way, it's not just General Motors, all of the companies, yep. the, I, I spoke to the industry the night before to uh, all of the companies and told them that everybody uh, sort of after 2008, 2009 had auto fatigue and the autos avoided uh, Capitol Hill to some extent and legislators didn't want to talk about it. There are a lot of critical issues that are going to impact this industry. We need to see all of the CEOs up in the Hill. Relationships matter. And though they, legislators need to be visiting the plants and the suppliers in the districts so that we're educated on what those issues are right. so we're making good, smart decisions.